the concept of your planet being destroyed, understand that, that your planet will never be destroyed, nor will your physical vehicle. Even if your physical vehicle goes through a, a process of cremation when you're finished with it, there is still dust. There is still matter left. It doesn't just cease to be. Even if that matter is so small that it just gets absorbed into your, your atmosphere, there is still something there of the physical vehicle. Welcome to the Stream of David podcast. I am here with Wendy, who has been on a couple of times before. What were our other topics that uh, that we did together when you came on the podcast? Uh, we discussed uh, labels uh, regarding sexuality. Uh, we did one on uh, triggers. Um, and I say that I'm going to say this is my third appearance on this podcast. So you probably you. have a better memory than I do. So we'll say it's your third. <laughs> and I, I remember the the sex the sexuality. Um, I remember that very well because I had to Google a couple of terms to, to even know what they were. <laughs> I know what a demi ace is now. Thanks to you. Well, thank you. And if you don't uh, out there listening, you should you should look it up because it was a very interesting podcast. We explored lots of lots of things that are beyond the the black and white, the highly polarized thinking that we have about everything in this world, especially sexuality. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about climate. Wendy always has great questions for me and for the stream. And if you listen to last week's episode, we had Paula Kid Casey on. Uh, Paula is a, is definitely uh, a, a more uh, right leaning um, person in, in terms of politics. She she supports Donald Trump. Uh, she definitely explores a lot of conspiracy theories. I loved having her on because she doesn't necessarily fit the stereotype that we are presented with of the typical Trump supporter. Very articulate, intelligent woman who has thought these things through and, and has her opinions and her very strong beliefs in that area. And I'm all about seeking the, the source consciousness perspective on everything, which is very neutral, uh, very much appreciation of all things. So if we are appreciating all things, and we are triggered by someone else's opinion that's different from ours, that's the opposite of uh, appreciating them. And what I said at the beginning of that episode, I gave a trigger warning. I said, trigger warning, you may be triggered by this and that's good because if you're triggered by this, that's showing you what your transgressors are. So don't turn it off, <laughs> dive into it and see what's triggering you and, and attempt to explore it. I say attempt because we're all on different levels of this journey and, and Definitely some things trigger us more than others. And, and we're all about detuning triggers in this practice. So if you're listening, that's what we do here. So uh, as a contrast to Paula's visit, Wendy is a self-described tree hugging. What'd you say? Tree hugging liberal Canadian. Tree hugging, tree -hugging liberal Canadian. We're going to balance things out. <laughs> so if you're triggered by Paula, you're going to love Wendy. And if you are not triggered by Paula, and love Paula, you might be triggered by Wendy, but there's something there to explore for everyone. So in these two episodes of this podcast, we're, we're getting a little political. Um, and, and I like talking about this stuff because to me, spirituality is a big tent of beliefs, but there is a faction of spiritual practitioners that that believes they have to sort of hide from things. I don't give power to politics. I've even said that, but I've never ignored it. I've never ran from it or hid from it. I've always still played in it. And when I get triggered by something, I, I ask why I'm being triggered. What do I need to explore in that trigger that I need to detune? Because if I get triggered by someone else's belief, that's my own doing, first of all. And there, there is a belief that I hold that's counter to that that's creating the trigger. And I know that I, my well-being is assured and that I'm an eternal strand of consciousness. This is a very temporary human experience that I'm in. And politics, like everything else, only holds the power that I choose to give to it. Interesting. So you immediately dove into the pop, the, uh, the topic of politics when we're in, re in regards to the environment, right? So a lot well, of politicized, said, it's very politicized. Yeah. Right. And now of course, other people on the other side are screaming, this is not about politics. This is about the survival of our species. There's, this is not about a bunch of politicians in Washington or wherever, but this is about us as a species. And then you have people saying, this is not politics. This is science. It has been proven by science. And the fact that it's being weaponized and politicized, it's 
uh, I think it's I think it's causing people to you know really spiral and get triggered even deeper. So yeah, it's 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 a big topic, and I'm really interested to see what the stream has to say. And you know, regarding my own background, yeah, I'm kind of a kind of a tree hugger, and I feed birds, I I recycle, you know. But even here in Canada, like people say, oh, we're you know you know we're so much more you know chill up here. No, it's a hot topic up here. You talk about the oil sands. You talk about, you know, a lot of what's going on in Alberta, which we call it the Texas of Canada. A lot, a lot of oil money out there, a lot of ranching, a lot of um, more conservative politics. And we talk about the pipelines, particularly going through lands that are that are sensitive environmentally or in relation to Indigenous people. So it's been interesting growing up up here because, you know, I didn't grow up in a hippie family. My father worked on the pipelines. I grew up with um, with farmers, with ranchers, with you know people who are like, well, yeah, the environment's important, but we also got to make a living, you know. So I was, you know, pipeline money, put food on the table in our family, and so it was a really interesting upbringing growing up with, you know, sitting at the dinner table and my dad talking about, you know, um, you know, working on the pipeline and all the really cool stuff that they're doing out there and. At the same time, I'm reading about the ozone layer. I'm reading about the rainforests. I'm, you know, talking with, uh, learning about global warming. So it was a very, I would say, fairly balanced upbringing. So I'm able to understand both sides of the argument. Absolutely, yeah, I can see why people are getting pissed off. It's like, why do I have to use, you know, paper straws when there's billionaires flying their own planes to go get groceries? You know, <laughs> and, you know, how feasible is it economically? Like we still have to live. We still have to drive our cars. We still have to, we're still reliant on fossil fuels for the time being. So yes, absolutely. I can see both ends of it. So um, part of my practice as a tieist is to kind of zoom out and take those labels off of me. Okay. Yeah, I'm a tree hugger, but, you know, maybe take that label off for a second, maybe get a little more neutral and zoom out. So that's, yeah, that's why I'm here today. I really want to get the stream's perspective on this. Good, good. Well, we're going to do that. In last week's episode, uh, I, I, I feel very blended with the stream these days. So if you've been listening for a while, you know that I don't directly channel as much as I used to. They just flow when we get going and they're present more. I, I think I've detuned enough, enough of my ego now to where that blended being, if you will, adds value where before it was always a contrast of here's David's very flawed and perfect human perspective. And then here's the stream. I'm still flawed and imperfect for sure, but I've incorporated a lot more source and more stream into my, my own persona just by detuning and practicing Taya. But in contrast to last week, I do want to bring the stream in. I, I want you to ask the, the questions to that consciousness directly without me in it, because last week the listeners got a lot of me, in my my stream guided or source like perspective on this but we're going to strip all that away this week and not uh because you're you're the chosen one that gets the stream Paul isn't or anything like that it's just i want to offer two different uh, experiences since we're kind of talking about something that is quasi political in two episodes in a row and then i promise you won't get any more anything else political for a while after this uh, if you're tired of hearing about politics, as most people are, because it's so polarized and it's fed to us everywhere all the time. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's take a quick break. And when we return from the break, we will uh, bring the stream in and you can ask about anything that you want and certainly about the environment. And we will get their uh, perspective on that. We'll be right back with Wendy in the stream. The Taya practice is on sale now at Amazon.com. And I can tell you, I hear from people now almost every day who are getting the book. They are plowing through it in about three days and they are telling me how it's a perspective unlike anything else they've heard before, that it is a blend of many things that they have dabbled in and they love the way that Taya marries all of these practices and belief systems, things that really work for people in one practice that you can begin employing in your life the day you get the book. So check out the TYA practice on Amazon today. We are here. Thank you so much for joining us today. We understand that you have questions for us regarding your environment. Absolutely. The environment is a 
uh, for lack of a better word, just a hot topic. That's an understatement. It is, um, it's on a lot of people's minds. It is um, a top topic in politics, in society, in science. And there's a great deal of concern and also disagreement regarding the state of our environment, the state of our climate, what we're doing to it, how much of an effect we're having on our planet, how much we're having an effect on the other creatures on this planet, our water, our soil, our air. And I was hoping to get some of your insights in how people can navigate this topic because it's, um, yeah, I've had a lot of big feelings about it. I have always have, but I've, I feel that especially the younger people who have so much access to information on these little devices that it's, we're living really not really in the age of information, but the age of too much information. And it's having effect on these people, you know, emotionally, psychologically. I feel a lot of frustration, despair, anger, a lot of anger on all sides of this topic. So tell us, tell us a little bit about our planet and humanity's interactions with it. We will begin by stating that all information, what you call information, all of it is, is a matter of perspective. Your information is an opinion. And even something that you consider scientifically proven is still an opinion, although it is a more informed opinion, perhaps, than, than just something that is based in, in feeling rather than, than, than things that have been tested. So like everything else, your opinions are a spectrum and the very high vibration of, of what you may call opinion is, is, is one that is rooted in some experimentation and, and some evidence and some findings that, that tend to support the idea. The, the lower vibration of that is a, is a theory that is unproven and is a feeling. However, both hold equal value because if there was never a theory or a feeling, you would not reach that level of scientific experimentation to, to prove or disprove it. So the, the theory and the fear and all of the, the, the things that you might consider low vibration are driving that higher vibration opinion that becomes something that perhaps you believe is a fact. But understand that just because a scientist proves it in, in their vibration and you are giving power to the vibration of science, that is the right path for you. But for another who doesn't believe the science, one that perhaps believes that the scientist has their own interests and they are working for someone else to, quote unquote, prove something on behalf of their interests, that holds value as well. The spectrum of beliefs has great value and the, the matrix of, of belief that humanity has created has this polarized aspect to it because you're in a polarized environment. The, and the polarizing thought is that the, the scientist, in, in this case, the scientist is correct and right, and that's the right thought, and the conspiracy theorist is wrong and should not be in many cases. That needs to be disproven. They need to change their minds. They need to believe the way that we do. That's all a sign of the, the polarity of your environment, and you're, you're not going to solve polarity. How you respond to polarity is completely within your control, however. That is your own creation via your belief system that you've developed for yourselves. So one could hear about things going on in your world, i.e. climate change, and hold a belief that something must be done, that the ones that are, are causing harm must be stopped, that things need to be reversed, and that you need to heal your world. We are not judging that mindset. There is nothing wrong with that. There, there is new creation and forward movement in that mindset. Where you get yourselves tripped up, however, is when you allow the fear and judgment to flavor that opinion, believing that everyone must move to your mindset and be where you are because you're fearing there are dire consequences for yourselves or the other beings 
on your planet or the planet itself if everyone doesn't move to your mindset. Not acknowledging that the spectrum of, of beliefs, the spectrum of mindset regarding this topic is creating forward movement. <clears throat> the, 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 the ones that are choosing to, to do nothing, the ones that are, are celebrating the continued activities that you label as destructive, they are creating expansion of consciousness just as you are, which is, which is the focus of, of being in physical. Your physical environment is, is going to self-destruct at some point. It, it is designed that way, just as your human body, as you know it, is going to self-destruct. But it's not really a destruction. It, it's a change in matter. You, your physical vehicle, your body that, that you utilize to have this, this human experience, as you refer to it, is designed to have an, a, a beginning, middle, and an end. It's an experience. And, and when you are finished with it, it is returned to the earth environment and it is reabsorbed into the earth environment one way or another. That is the design. The, the, the earth physical environment, as all physical environments, was designed and is designed to be a self-sustaining environment. So anything that you create in your world is of your world and will return it will return itself when it is no longer needed as a vehicle, if, if it is a vehicle at all, speaking of, of plant and, and, and physical matter, it will return to the environment and feed the environment. Even the things that you label as toxic, because the toxins in your world are still of your world. They are not brought in from a foreign place. But certainly you can discern a preference to go easier on your environment, understanding that there are certain things you, that you can indeed label toxins that is going to create some destruction, if not complete destruction of what you call life. There, there, you are aware that there are planets that you would call dead. There are no signs of life on these other environments that are, that are not that far in distance physically from where you are. That was not always the case. Because that environment would have never formed if there wasn't consciousness, and there still is some level of consciousness, but not the level of consciousness of Earth, flowing through it, creating a physical expansion that you call life. All of, all of these, 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 these heavenly bodies, as you may refer to them, all of these planets and other things, are, are all essentially decomposed life. Something formed, it, it expanded, it grew, it fed. It had what you may call some sort of lifespan and it ceased to be the consciousness was withdrawn from it. It was returned to a similar environment via law of attraction. And that returned state went through a decomposition and in that process became a, a planet, a rock matter, whatever you want to call it. You, you have all of these names for these things, but that's the process of, of physical creation. Uh, the, the dust and dirt and all these uh, particles did not just form from nowhere. It was all some sort of a, 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 an expanding physical form at one time and move through a projection of consciousness that it, that caused it to be and expand just as a new new body is formed in your world. And then when that consciousness had its experience with that that formation, that formation fed back to itself, decomposed and became something else. That's where your worlds essentially come from. We, we have taken very heady scientific ideas and, and really dumbed them down to a way that you can really understand how all, all matter is formed. So the concept of your planet being destroyed, understand that, that your planet will never be destro destroyed, nor will your physical vehicle. Even if your physical vehicle goes through a, a process of cremation when you're finished with it, there is still dust. There is still matter left. It doesn't just cease to be. Even if that matter is so small that it just gets absorbed into your, your atmosphere, there is still something there of the physical vehicle. So everything that is created in your environment is of your environment and returns to feed your environment in one way or another. That feeding of the environment, however, can absolutely facilitate an experience for the environment, meaning it can be toxic, meaning it could you can you can kill plant matter, you can kill life matter, certainly. 
And so when you're experiencing that and you're viewing it from a human ego driven perspective, you are labeling that perhaps as wrong and should not be. This should not be happening. We should not be killing our environment. We are not guiding you one way or the other on any specific path for your world. Any guidance on any specific path for your world is always going to be coming from a place of ego, not source. Because we see all of you and your environment and everything in it as eternal strands of consciousness as you are. You are expressions of that which we are. Meaning that this is a temporary experience for the sole purpose of expansion of consciousness. But how you achieve that expansion of consciousness is that you project into a physical environment, you allow your, your physical consciousness, in the case of humanity, you, you use the term ego, to overshadow us, and in that overshadowing, create the contrasting experience that you have because you're in this polarized environment your vibration is moving up and down so you come and experience things that are your preferences right away you start discerning preferences and those preferences are your motivators to move through the journey and along the journey there's always going to be obstacles and the obstacles can remove you from the physical environment instantaneously or in a, in a long linear period of time and everything in between based on your belief systems. Your belief systems create the reality. Your belief systems create the physical reality, the environment, and the, the way that you choose to move through them. It, it is all your belief system that's doing the work there, even though many of you and most of you are not aware of that on a high level and, or in, in many and not on any level. You're, you're just here experiencing and, and, and very often believe that things just happen and that some are lucky and some are not, and you're somewhere in the middle of that. And sometimes you have had movement forward and sometimes you've had challenges. And most of you listening to these words understand that the more you focus on your challenges, the more the universe is going to deliver. You are always receiving what you focus upon. Your, your mind is creating the reality. So if you're focusing on something and saying the planet is being destroyed and it's going to harm all of us if we don't do something, you are creating that reality for yourself. And you will create scenarios where you will confirm your belief. One who believes that you can do anything that you want to the planet and, and, and you will be just fine and it doesn't matter. will have that type of experience. And where we are guiding you away from, if you so choose, th 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 there are no mandates coming from us. But if you're listening to us, you are seeking to raise your vibration. That is the, the, the reason that we are being drawn forth through David and sharing with all of you is because your collective desire is to raise your vibration, understand your vibrational nature on a higher level and have a more joyous existence while you're in physical and understand your eternal nature. That is what we are all about. If you're listening to us, that is your vibration. We are not here for the, 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 the total of humanity because the total of humanity is not on the path to, to be ready for this information and listen to this and participate. And, and we do not judge that whatsoever, nor do we judge anything. So here you are having this opinion that the planet is in trouble, it's in peril, and that you must do something. That is a preference. You are here to discern preferences. You are not going to escape having preferences. But when you allow that preference to build momentum in the direction of I am right and the ones that oppose this, this idea or this preference are wrong, you are creating that situation for yourself. You are creating that reality. Your focus on the wrongness of it is going to draw you deeper and deeper and deeper into the topic in that way. And it, it will be a lower vibrational, more judgmental, more ego driven experience if you choose to do that. And what we, we will also add here is that if you are focused on the destruction of your planet and focused on the wrongness of it, you are going to show yourself evidence of that and you will see more of it. We, we often state that you are contributing to it. We are stating that in that way to aid you in your understanding that you are contributing to it for you. That it will become a, a more and more volatile topic for you the more you focus on the volatility of it. You can have that experience. You can discern that preference. There, there is no prize or penalty at the end of your human journey for any preferences that you have. However, and you are well aware of this already, 
in the areas of your life that you have detuned fear and judgment and allowed appreciation for things that you once feared and judged, you have found more joy and clarity in that process. And now you are finding yet another topic that is fed to you often in your media that you are seeing it a lot and thinking about it a lot because it's heavy in your vibration. You can continue on that path if you wish, but if your true desire is joy, clarity, and abundance, then you're always going to be looking to detune anything that triggers you into lower vibration. So you're talking about detuning. So for those who are not uh, familiar listening to this, tell us a little bit about detuning. Detuning is, is, is calming the ego perspective. Humanity has, is for, for, for the, the purpose of communication, because we are not judging this process, but, but where humanity is, is with a, a, an overdeveloped ego, which serves to overshadow source, which means humanity has moved through a period and is in a period where ego is overshadowing source, not completely, but largely overshadowing source. You, you are, have become so intelligent and so advanced that you moved away from the, the concept of, of your eternal nature and, and, and that which we are. And in that moving away, you created technology that is bringing you back to that. Because of your ability to communicate, you are all getting together and you're, you're, you're essentially comparing notes with one another and comparing ideas and experiences, and you are collectively coming together and questioning things. The hu humanity has never experienced this in this way. So now you've created technology to the point where you have almost global communication. So with this almost global communication, you are meeting people from the opposite end of your world that you have never met in person, that have perhaps never been to where you are and you've never been to where they are, yet you are finding these similarities in, in, as opposed to contrasts. You are finding these similarities of mindset. You are noticing that there are elements of control all over your world, just with different labels, your governments, your religions, your cultures, these belief systems that keep you in a matrix of beliefs. That matrix of beliefs is not bad, nor is it evil. That matrix of beliefs created a structure that brought you on the contrasting journey that created suffering, certainly, but also created things that solved the suffering. You're, you're moving out of the food chain. You're moving into structures. You're, you're, you're creating interior climates for yourselves. You're, you're creating a food source that, that, that doesn't potentially kill most of you. You're expanding your lifespan, even if the expanded lifespan has more pain and suffering toward the end, you're still getting more years. You're creating all of these things. And in your creation of all of these things, you've created a lot of technology. You've created education systems. You've created family units and things that, that absolutely moved humanity forward in a physical way. Very ego-driven, but still expansion of consciousness. That is the wonderful thing about this system that is created is that expansion of consciousness is guaranteed no matter what. And that's why you're here. So you can come and, and according to the, the more matrix driven 3D opinion, have a very low vibe life. You can come and, 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 and be a, a lifetime criminal or a lifetime sufferer or some type of illness. You can come and torture yourselves mentally for your entire lifetime. You can come and be addicts. You can, you can come and have a very short experience. You can come and be party to things that are, are beyond your actual doing, like war and famine and things like that, and, and even meet an untimely end, in your opinion and still have expansion of consciousness. And at the end of the physical lifespan, return to your eternal state of being in full awareness and gratitude for exactly what was experienced, regardless of how it's judged by humanity. Because that, that's the purpose of being. Coming and expanding your consciousness in the having of the human experience, period. Not a specific human experience, but the human experience. Whether it is flawed and imperfect and, and full of suffering, are full of ease and celebration and joy and, and, and what you call material abundance and everything in between, all of it expands your consciousness. We will, however, guide you to ponder the concept that those that project into what you might call more dire circumstances are strands of consciousness seeking that greater degree of expansion of consciousness that they know they're going to receive and projecting into something and having the suffering experience or 
projecting into something, having the suffering experience and moving themselves through it. The degree of expansion of consciousness is not equal for every being, although you all receive some of it. So we, we talk about how measurement is, is an ego driven concept and in the, the, the energetic realm, there is, there is no focus upon measurement. However, there are degrees of expansion of consciousness. You, you are not all intending to come and expand in the same way. You, that, that is why you're all different. That is why your soul is, is different. Your, your expression of source as projected in physical is not the same. So when you, you come and have these different experiences, certainly you can understand how being an ego driven being, you're going to want more joy and more abundance and more clarity and less of the things that, that create your suffering, less of the things that you discern as, as should not be. That is, that is certainly understandable by all of you. Where you all get yourselves tripped up, however, is believing that one is right and the other is wrong, and this is how you all should be, and that other people should not be that or be having that experience. And notice how it is, it is far easier for most of you to detune your own life's transgressors, your own pain, your own suffering, than it is very often for you to detune the suffering of the collective or for others. You, you, you make peace with your transgressors. You make peace with your childhood abuse and your abusers and your, your other transgressors. And then you hear about that happening to someone else. And it is more challenging for you to make peace with them because you are being presented a concept that truly you are not party to. Here is someone on the other side of the world in the middle of, of a war that is suffering. And, and, and it's, it is understandable by all of you how you can look at that and claim that that should not be. You can all agree that shouldn't be, though it is. Where we are guiding you to is accept that what is, th th there is little value in labeling what is as should not be. Yes, you are expanding your consciousness and your suffering experience in that judgment, but there's not a lot of value there. If you really want to heal and you really want to solve, the appreciation of the experience is the key to that. And that is very much in opposition of what your matrix teaches you at this time. Your matrix is teaching you that you must judge it, that you must have an opinion, that you must get involved. You must place your hands in the clay there. However, we guide you to take note, if you choose to do so, that these things that you all collectively push against and label as should not be, don't cease to be and you're labeling them as such. In fact, they move forward. They expand very often because the collective consciousness opinion of should not be is actually fueling more of because where is the focus when you're labeling something should not be your, your focus is on exactly what you were discerning that you do not want. So the fearing and the judging of climate in the case of this conversation is fueling more of that. And many of you will hear these words and say, if we do nothing, then it's only going to get worse. We are not asking you to, to as David puts it, bypass and, and do nothing. We are not asking you to bury your heads in the sand about anything. We are asking you to take a very neutral position of appreciation, which is not celebration, nor is it condemnation. Appreciation is deep understanding. You demonstrated that at the beginning of this, this, this interaction and in that you stated that you understand the other opinion because that's how you grew up. But now you're out of that mindset. You're out of that vibration. You have discerned a different preference and in, as, as you have moved through your human experience and your preference now is for that to change. But you see both sides. If you focus on both sides and appreciation and your matrix tells you that you're not able to do that, that you can't be on, on both sides, you can't be on the, on the fence on a topic, you've got to take a position that you must take a position mindset is not rooted in universal truth whatsoever. That's very ego driven because it does collectively lower your vibration and make you more compliant beings. We want you to think this way. So you can't be on the fence. You've got to come think like us. And if you don't think like us, then you're wrong. And then you go over to the other side and you have the other side telling you the exact same thing. You have to be on our side of this. The true power is, is neutrality because well-being is guaranteed. We are sources. You are all of source source guarantees well-being. 
in your death experience and you're separating from your human journey, you are returned to a completed state of well-being. At that state, there is no polarity. There is no contrast. You want for nothing. You appreciate all. You are as we are. And that is available to you now. That is available to you in your human journey. Not 100% of the time. Not one of you as a human being or any physically manifested being is going to achieve source perspective and stay there at that vibration all the time. Your world is designed to, to take you out of that. How much and how often, how frequently you're taken out of that, however, is a matter of your belief system. So you can craft your belief system. You are the one that created in the first place. You are a unique strand of consciousness and you project it into a belief system, understanding that you are going to absorb the information around you and create your own belief system from there. And yes, very often your belief system may not be that far from the belief system that you absorbed as a child. By design, that keeps your world moving. Because if you all came as complete, independent, unique thinking beings and were not impacted at all by your surroundings, your world would be chaotic because you would be all manifesting all sorts of different things at different levels. Notice how hum across humanity, you, you have a lifespan of your physical vehicle. Well, if you're, you're, your physical vehicle is of your own creation, why not have a lifespan that is eternal? Why not come in and be in this physical environment forever and never age? Anything is possible because you're creating the reality. But the collective consciousness mindset that your physical vehicle is going to come and it's going to move through an aging process and that you're going to have an average lifespan, you have changed that. Humanity has moved the needle on that, but it has moved the needle progressively because of the system that you're in where the collective consciousness does affect you. To, to simply say that you're going to believe that you can live to be 1,000 years old in, in linear time and hold that belief is very challenging. It's not impossible, but it's highly challenging because you would be one of the few on your planet at this time that holds that belief. So here you are as, as an independent strand of consciousness, but also part of the collective of humanity and certainly the collective of the earth environment. And that ripples on out from there where you are absorbing the thoughts and ideas of the others around you all the time. This is why humanity developed in a very similar way, even though there was no transportation and no way from one on this side of your planet and this side of your planet to have ever physically met. Yet the physical vehicles developed almost the same just a few variations and you call those variations race yet a lot of similarities, far more similarities and variations. There is collective consciousness present. And even though the, the ego has been well-developed, we do not judge it as overdeveloped, but certainly humanity is, is well-developed in ego consciousness. You still have collective. You, you still think like the collective, you absorb that, whether you're doing it through your media or doing it naturally, it, it, it is a natural part of your existence to absorb the thoughts and ideas and beliefs of those around you. So you're never going to achieve, and we, we very rarely say never, but in the design of this physical realm, you are not going to achieve a state where you are completely cut off from the collective because you are part of it. You are all part of source. So you are all having that collective experience at different levels, but you can change. You've increased your lifespan across humanity through the belief that there's certain things that you can do to increase your lifespan. And you can document that your lifespan is now longer than it once was. So the collective consciousness can make change, but it's never monumental change. It's never a quantum leap. As you would say that the quantum leaps that you achieve in your world are highly disruptive. Your, your COVID pandemic was a quantum leap. Things shifted just enough to really shift your, your entire planet collectively. But notice again, that's still on a spectrum. There were certainly some that were unaware of that completely that, that did not participate in the experience, but most of your planet did. That was a sign of a quantum leap. You, you are all communicating via social media. You're getting together, you're talking, you're questioning things. That questioning of things drove the vibration that created enough momentum to create a sudden shift in consciousness that you could call a quantum leap. 
So where we're guiding you with climate change is to, to discern your preference, but understand that the fearing of it and the judgment of it is not going to be the solving of it. And there is certainly nothing wrong with discerning the preference to pollute less and, and, and to, to be easier on your planet and less disruptive of the environment. However, no matter how disruptive you are of the environment, it is a self-sustaining environment and humanity may make it in, in inhabitable, uninhabitable for itself, but the environment itself will always bounce back. Well-being will always rebound. In fact, the vibration that is humanity, even if you were to become extinct, you would simply return as another advanced form of life in this world and it would start all over again. Your eternal beings, something that takes millions or even billions of years in your linear time is nothing to your eternal self. Thank you. That's, uh, that's a lot of food for thought. Do you have any parting words for us? The, the, the parting words were, would be that we, we have stated a lot and we would guide you to listen to this again and again and again to really gain clarity if, if you're struggling with it. We are not guiding you away from your preferences. And if your preference is for a cleaner water and cleaner air and, and, and not dumping garbage in your ocean and, and, and not doing things of that nature, have that preference. But understand when you get drawn into the fear and judgment narrative, you are fueling more of exactly what you do not want. That is the overarching message in this interaction. Understanding that fear and judgment is something that, that you are focusing on with increased energy. The universe responds to energy. So when you are focusing upon something and it should not be mindset and you were triggered and you were lower on your, your spiral and you were feeling that, 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 that welling up of, of emotion, you are fueling more of the same because the universe is not responding to what is right and what is wrong. The universe is allowing you to create your own environment and being the co-creator of that by sending whatever you're focusing upon. And when you're focusing with great emotion, that is amped up. The universe is not judging and saying, this is what you deserve. This is what you should have. This is what's good for humanity. You have zero evidence of that because there are plenty of things that you discern. It's not your preference happening in your world. That is very clear evidence that the universe nor source that which we are, are judgmental entities because we do not see anything happening in your, your world as bad. It is all a, a vehicle designed for expansion of consciousness, period. And in that process, you come and have a physical experience and there's things that you prefer and there's things that you do not. And whatever you focus on, you're going to get, you're going to get more of. That's the secret. And it's not such a secret, but what many of you are challenged with now that you are gaining understanding of what many of you refer to as the law of attraction, law of conscious creation is, is you're stumbling on these big issues that you believe you can, you can focus on this and you can appreciate this, but there's always this line that you're not willing to cross until humanity moves to a space where you're collectively crossing that line and allowing yourselves to have full blown appreciation for all that is, which would be the very top of your vibrational spiral. You're, you're not going to experience that awakening that you seek. The true awakening is in the awakening to the fact that you are doing all of it, you are creating all of it, and that you can appreciate all of it and have a very joyous existence in the process if you so choose. With much love, that is what we have. Welcome back. <sighs> Good stuff. Yeah, the... Um, yeah, there was a lot of information flowing. <laughs> a lot. It was good, but that was just like so much like, yeah, you know, I, I, I get it. I see it. That's kind of an, I'm back there you're sort of hearing and thinking, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Why did we not realize this? Why is it so hard for that's just my ego, though, wanting to play with that? Why is it so hard for other people to get this? Why can't they just get it? Well, source is saying there's nothing wrong with it being hard for people. There's nothing wrong with people that think this is insane, that think this is the craziest damn thing they've ever heard. And they turned it off, you know, a long time ago They're not <laughs> under the podcast. There's nothing wrong with that. We shouldn't concern ourselves with that. We are sharing information for those that want it and they're ready for it. And they're there. That's where they are in their journey. But this is out there. 
and when I say out there, it is leading edge thought that there aren't many people allowing themselves to think on this level. But you know that what you, you level up and then once you get there, you realize this isn't so scary. This higher altitude isn't so frightening. It, it, it's actually comforting when you get there. But we have all of these elements at play that say, well, you can't not care. You can't be cold. You can't be callous. You're blaming the victim. You know, all those little things. And we can't get drawn into those conversations if they are lowering our vibration. And we need to understand if we're practicing this, that it's not our place to convert anyone. I, I know people that get into things like this and they see they get clarity and they're so much more joyous. They're so much more clear about things. And yes, when you're in that higher vibrational space, your life is more abundant because you're allowing more of the good stuff in sources, well-being whatever our version of that is in our opinion, our belief system, but well-being, you're going to always be okay with source. And, and no matter what, you are going to return to source and absolutely experience well-being. And it's available to us all the time. We are the ones that separate ourselves from well-being. And well-being can be anything and everything that we want to experience in this physical world because we, we create stuff. So if we want stuff, we can experience it. But the trick is to understand that the stuff is just yet another experience. It's not eternal. And the stuff in and of itself isn't making us happy. Our appreciation of the stuff brings us joy. Until we get bored with it, we don't appreciate it anymore. And that shiny thing that we had to have that brought happiness at one time is just sitting in the back of a closet somewhere or in a garage. <laughs> it happens. All right. Well, good questions. Did you did you get some clarity from the stream? Did, did it help? Yes. Uh, it's... Um yeah, you just kept going and going and going and going. And so the stream was, uh, was really serving it today. So I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go back and listen to this again. And I think it's a really refreshing perspective, um, in, uh, in, as a alternative to, you know, this, this, this clashing that's going on. I think anyone, wherever, wherever you're, you're sitting on this topic, I think you can find some value in that message. Good. And I would say that if, if these, if this political, you know, politics or, or money or health uh, or relationships, those are the big ones for most people. If that is triggering you better to, to shut it down, turn it off, move away from it for a while, do your detuning work without the, the struggle and then understand that you are detuned when you can return to it and experience it and not judge it and experience it the way that you used to. Right. This isn't about, you know, having to hide your head in the sand for the rest of your life or, or turn off the news and, and never go on social media. I don't watch news. I don't watch local news because it's just designed to draw you in through negativity. But I do like being social and on social media and interacting with people. And I can move through something and not pay attention to it and not be triggered by it. And that's a lovely way to be to be able to experience all of humanity and appreciation of it exactly as it is. That's real joy. That's paradise for me. Yeah. And if you're new to this, I'm, I've been in Taya for a couple of years and you know, I've gotten the tools and this is where the real work is beginning. So the work never ends. And if you're new to this, don't be afraid to just, you're not, don't see it as bearing a hand to the stand, take a break, turn, turn, turn off your phone, turn off your TV walk away from the person who's triggering you just go outside take a walk take a breather and just take time out for yourself to raise your own vibration and if you get you know even just a few better feeling thoughts that's progress you're on your way mm -hmm. right and yeah then, that's, that's a very good point because if you're if you're triggered by something and you're down in low vibration and you want to explore it or solve it and you're still in low vibration, there's not much solving power. Uh, the, the, the stream has said that when we're below neutral on our spiral and we're down in more ego and less source, we're recycling. Source is a source of all new creation. So we recycle down there. There's no new thought available. You're just recycling stuff. If you want to get really clear on why you were triggered, like you said, disconnect from it, step away, go out into nature, breathe a little, meditate, get back to a place of appreciation where you feel better and then understand now you've got source flowing again. It doesn't leave you. You just overshadow it. You're no longer overshadowing it in your low vibe experience. And now the clarity of why you were triggered is available to you. 
So you don't have to run from it. A lot of times we'll, we'll be triggered by something. Eventually the, the vibration goes back up. Polarity draws us up just like it draws us down and we don't want to be triggered again. So we, we forget about it. We don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. Um, we're through that now. I don't want to talk about it, but it's still there and it's going to trigger you again. And it's still running in the, in your subconscious all the time, dragging your, your default vibration down. So in this process or this practice, we get triggered. We step away from what's triggering us, certainly, because why you're just going to keep getting triggered as long as you're feeding yourself. You meditate, go outside, do something that you know is going to raise your vibration. Then when you're in a better state, instead of glossing over or forgetting about it, then you explore it. Why was I triggered by that? Let me explore what would what would be triggering to me? What belief do I hold that calls the trigger? Because it's always a belief that you've created that's causing every single trigger about every topic always. And then decide what you want to do with it. The detuning is always found in the appreciation of it. High vibration solves things, heals things. All of that is available in the source consciousness that is our higher vibrational register that we drown out with our ego. And that's why we always say detune fear and judgment, allow more source and you will have clarity. Clarity brings joy. Joy and clarity bring abundance. They all flow and work together. So great questions, great insight. Um, fantastic uh, tie of practice you've got going there, Wendy. Thank you so much, David. Another interesting podcast. So thank you once again for being on. I'll look, I'll look forward to your next topic. Cheers. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Stream of David podcast. To learn more about the stream or the tie of practice, visit thestreamofdavid.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcast provider. If you would, take a moment to leave us a review. And also, follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, and join our free Facebook group, The Taya Practice, The T-Y-A Practice. Thanks for listening.